Hi guys, welcome back to another video. I'm Dr. Downey and today we're going to discuss how to treat acne and acne related to steroids. Um, so the first part of this video is just going to be a general approach to treating acne and then from there we are going to discuss how to treat acne if it is caused by steroids. So we have to understand, to understand how to treat acne you kind of have to understand how or how it origin or what it originates from. So essentially, um, there are four different ways and or factors that contribute to acne formation, and I've highlighted the two that um that steroids seem to affect the most, and that's increased sebum production from the sebaceous glands. So sebum is that oily material, and the second is just. Um, bacteria on the skin that tends to, seems to increase in colony numbers when steroids are used. Um, so if we look here on this slide, um, it shows the different abnormalities that may contribute to your acne. Each person has acne that may be caused by over stimulation of one of the factors I mentioned above. And these are the treatments aimed at those specific problems. If increased sebum is your uh, is the issue then these are the treatments for that so essentially that's the approach one could take to treating their acne but the first step in treatment of acne is always skin care so this invol involves using a gentle cleanser once to twice daily or preferably twice once in the morning once in the evening and it has to be a pH neutral skin cleanser, so one that isn't too alkaline like soap, and you need to apply gentle scrubbing just with the fingertips, you don't need to use abrasives. With acne, you need to use skin products that specifically say non-comedogenic, -com which means they don't contribute to plugging core, uh, <laughs> clogging pores and things like that, and you should never pick the lesion or the acne. And then other possible ways are diet cha dietary changes. Um, this doesn't have a lot of data behind it, so there are no randomized control trials, so I can't say for sure if diet plays a large impact. I'm sure it does contribute a bit, but it seems that milk, and specifically cow's milk, and high glycemic load foods contribute quite a bit to acne. Now when deciding what agent is applicable to you, obviously you should do this through a doctor, but you need to grade your acne. We have mild and moderate slash severe acne. So with mild acne you get scattered pimples here and there and it doesn't involve such large body parts and it's like not confluent in that the acne spreads from here to there or something like that. You just get little either blackheads or whiteheads and there's no scarring, no nodules. So I'll show you a picture just now of a nodule. They're essentially large, what people refer to as cystic acne, where they're more than five millimeters in diameter. And then in moderate to severe, to severe, you have that scarring, you have multiple areas affected, you have those nodules, and it is visually very prominent. If you look at this image here, we have comedonal. Comedones are just blackheads or whiteheads, just simple acnes, whereas these papules are larger than that and but they're still less than five millimeters in diameter if they reach above five millimeters then it's a nodule and if you have nodules then you'd be graded as severe acne so for mild treatment if we you only have comedones so blackheads whiteheads and it's restricted um the first line of care is something like a topical retinoid retinoids are things like um Accutane, tretinoin, but topical ones are ones you can apply on the skin and you would start on the lowest dosage and you would go up if it isn't working and if it still isn't working and you're on the highest dose, highest regimen, then you might have to consider moderate to severe management for your acne. And if you look back on these images and you see, oh, I have papulopustular, 
um, acne, then you need a topical retinoid, so again, isoretinoin plus a benzyl peroxide. Um, so you can find, I think you can buy benzyl peroxide over the counter, it's either a cream or a wash that you can use daily. If that doesn't work, then you start using topical antibiotics like clindamycin and dapsone. If that's still not working, again, after you've exhausted these measures, you have to uh, you have to go on to mo uh, moderate to severe management of your acne. Then obviously, once you're you've controlled your acne, if you have controlled it with the mild treatment, then you have to maintain it. And unfortunately, topicals only seem to suppress the acne and doesn't cure it. So in terms of treating your moderate to severe acne, you have um, to first look at it. There are two separate ways of treating it. You have to ask yourself three questions first, or the patient three questions. And is, is that, um, first is there extensive nodular, nodular acne, so a lot of nodules and covering a lot of area, is there scarring? If there's scarring or psychological distress, if you answer yes or no, this will change your treatment. So if you answer yes to any of the three, you go straight on to um, Roaccutane, Accutane, oral isotretinoin. Um, there's a dosage calculation and it should be done with the doctor because it is quite toxic. Um, but essentially, it tends to be started at 0.5 milligrams per kg per day, um, and then you add an oral glucocorticoid. That is the most recent suggestion. So that's for if you have severe acne, and then moderate acne, so you answered no to all three of those questions. Then you have to see, again, is it a comedone or is it a, papul a papulopustular slash nodular acne, but not severe nodular. So if it is papulopustular slash nodular, then you would start, you could start with an oral tetracycline, which is an antibiotic, and then you add, if you're taking an antibiotic, you want to have benzyl peroxide along with it in order to reduce antibiotic resistance. And then um, from there, you uh, obviously you need a topical, so you could also have an eye, a topical retinoin. If that doesn't work, if you're a female, you could try the oral contraceptive or oral spironolactone, and again, you'd need a topical such as an uh, tretinoin or something. And if that's if the antibiotics don't work and you're a male, then you'd go on to isol. Um, oral isotretinoin, which is Accutane, and you don't need a topical for that. But if it's a comedone only, you don't need to start with the oral antibiotics because it's most likely not due to, this is saying most likely not due to over, over colonization with bacteria. So you would then just skip that part and then the rest, it, it's treated like the rest. So now we get on to the interesting part, or the steroid and acne part. So as I alluded to in the uh, start of this video, steroids cause acne by upregulating these two mechanisms. So they increase sebum production via the sebaceous gland, so the gland that secretes sebum, this oily substance, and this essentially leads to proliferation of this bacteria that's normal on the skin but does seem to be fine, found in high quantities in acne. So what happens or what steroids do is they hypertrophy the sebaceous gland and this essentially results in increased sebum excretion and therefore you have more fats on your skin which favor the acne causing bacteria and this increases the population of that acne so you get this acne. So how does or how do steroids upregulate the sebum production? Well it's actually found the they've actually found that androgen receptors are on sebocytes and follicular keratinocytes. So sebocytes are 
the cells that help secrete sebum, and keratinocytes help create keratin. Too much keratin blocks pores. So they found androgen receptors on this, and if you think logically, this would mean DHT, which has a higher binding affinity to this androgen receptor, would essentially cause more acne. But not only that, testosterone itself could cause acne, or anything that binds to the receptor, in fact. So what is also interesting is 5-alpha reductase is found in the skin or in these cells. So essentially the skin converts testosterone to DHT, which is a more uh, is a compound with a higher binding affinity for the androgen receptors. So 5-alpha reductase indirectly contributes to this if, since you have more testosterone, more 5-alpha reductase activity, and more DHT. One mechanism could be through blocking the 5-alpha reductase in the skin. And again, there are other enzymes such as 3-beta and 17-beta hydroxysteroid dehydrogenase, which are involved in steroidogenesis that have also been found in these cells. An interesting thing they found is that PPAR agonists are seem to help in the development and proliferation of sebocytes, so something like carterine could actually cause acne. So this image is what a typical steroid user with acne looks like, or if it gets that bad. And it tends to be quite genetic, because I've seen some individuals who use exactly the same dosages, yet one has a lot poorer response in terms of acne to the other. And if you look here, you will see there's actual acne, as seen by the inflamed comedones or papules, but there also are these areas of hypopigmentation, so lighter skin color and hyperpigmentation. And if we look at this picture, you'll see this is sometimes seen in a few steroid users, where there's this hyperpigmentation. And this is essentially post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. So in steroid acne, I noticed these mixed pathologies where there's acne and post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. So that would mean we'd have to address both of these issues. So in order to address the acne, uh, a review just suggested you treat it the way you would treat any acne, which I also would suggest but you could take further measures and make it more efficient if we target the mechanism through which steroids are causing this acne. So we target the origin. So theoretically, you'd think something like finasteride works since it blocks 5-alpha reductase and there's 5-alpha reductase in the skin, which leads to conversion to DHT and more androgen receptor binding. But Finasteride only binds to 5 alpha reductase isozyme type 2, whereas something like dutasteride binds to both. So type 1 and type 2. Type 2 is found in the prostate, type 1 is the skin, and things like that. So dutasteride could theoretically work if that is the cause of your acne. And something like spirinolactone could also work, but this comes with many side effects and would only be suggestible in someone actually using steroids. Not a normal male because it would just, they wouldn't have enough circulating androgens. Some have also suggest estrogen have, could play a role. There are no papers on this, but it's highly plausible and that through controlling estrogen, you could control your acne. I personally haven't seen this uh, correcting estrogen work, but it could possibly work. And in terms of fluctuations, this to me would make sense, because if you inject more regularly, you don't have these massive peaks, and these massive peaks of steroid concentration would stimulate the androgen receptor more than if you had stable levels. And uh, this massive peak leads to larger conversion or, uh, and essentially more androgen receptor binding. So you want to minimize these peaks also. So those are just additional measures you could take along with using actual treatment for your acne. And obviously the treatment depends on the grade of your acne.
So now this post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation, which is quite common. So what is absolutely needed is photoprotection and treating the underlying cause. So photoprotection is just wearing sunscreen and stuff because there are more melanocytes in these areas of hyperpigmentation. And you want to treat the underlying cause, obviously, if it isn't, if it's still present. So if you still have acne, you want to treat it first because, or alongside uh, treatment for post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation, or else you're not really going to see much of a result in that way. So ranked from best or most research to not a lot of research, I put all the treatment recommendations that are currently recommended for doctors in order. So first is a topical hydroquinone, then we have topical retinoids like isoretinoin alongside topical corticosteroids. Then if those are failing individually, you can do triple agent therapy where you combine the three, the top three mentioned. If that's not working, you can start using alternative measures like azelic acid or chemical pills or possibly laser, but laser has been shown in some instances to worsen post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation and actually cause it. So that is everything that I know about acne treatment and I hope you found this informative. If you did, leave a like and let me know what you think below and let me know what you do for your acne. Thanks for watching.